Morty theme. This theme was lifted directly from a song called For the Damaged Coda by the band Blonde Redhead. But I do think that the band took a great deal of inspiration for this theme from Chopin's Nocturne in F minor, Opus 55. They're completely different styles and genres of music, but somehow they share a very similar spirit, I think. So you can look that up if you're curious. I also have a tutorial for that nocturne on my channel if you're curious. All right, I'll begin by playing through the opening segment for you that leads into the theme, and then we'll go through it bar by bar, and I'll show you how to learn it yourself. Here's what it sounds like. Okay, so let's jump right into it. The left hand is very straightforward. We begin with five, two, and one. This is your first position, right? The piece is in C minor, but we don't start in C minor locally. So five, uh, one, two, one. And you just play that over and over again four times. that's what you get for your first two bars. A small detail that makes it sound a little bit better is if you make sure that the thumb is not as loud as the two bottom notes. Moving on, left hand drops a little bit, and the right hand is introduced, albeit very gently. So that would be five, one, two, one. And you repeat that three times before the pattern changes. Once, twice, three times. And on the last one, the middle note changes to an E flat. Five, one, E flat, one. E flat with the third. sort of takes over here. But I'll come back to that. All right, so now in the left hand, this is what we have all the way through. Four times. Three times. A e flat, twice. your time with that relax your wrist don't get tense as you play it keep it nice and flexible so it can breathe and now the right hand is added in just ever so slightly when you get to this position right so the first two bars then here you have a kind of doubling up on the f's with the second finger three times and then the pattern changes moving on bar five 
Again. Twice doubling up on Fs. And that's it. The rest of it is just the left hand. coming from we just finished this right you can either use a second finger or a third finger to play this next note I don't really mind which one maybe a third so maybe use a third lift four five and then four on D natural in the right hand we have octave C's basically punctuated by these single G's in between them kind of like seesawing back and forth you sink on the C's and rise on the G's like you're breathing next everything shifts over same idea Next, the outside notes, the octave, shifts down, but the third finger stays where it is. Moving on, the octave shifts to G. And now, the middle note is played by the fourth finger. Watch. Octave G. Four and F. And then the last moment is octave G. And then a two on D. And that D leads you to the next bar, bar nine, a third finger on E flat. backtrack just a little further so in the left hand we were finishing here left hand goes to the third on G and then they align lift lift arrive see it coming planet don't guess and the pattern of it remains. Okay, let's stitch all that up. So from... So you play that twice. Next, the right hand drops to a D with the second finger, and the left hand drops to that position, five, one, three, one. That's only played once, so that'll be together. The D repeats, but the left hand changes to G major. Five, one, two, one. So, this final bar, that leads us into the main theme. Stitch all that up.
left hand first. Very low C octave. Five, two, one. Back to five. Sort of seesawing. Like that. It's all in eighths. Next. D octave. That's our next position. Five, two, and one. And then same pattern, same seesawing pattern. Bottom, top, bottom. Next. Octave E flats. I'll probably use a four down here. Four and one. Followed by four, two, and one. So that's your next position. Four, two, one. Same pattern. And then B natural up here. Octave. And then your next position is five, two, and one. Same pattern. super straightforward. You kind of already know it intuitively because you've heard it so many times. C's, octave B flats. I would use four and one on that. A flats, four and one. G, back up, back down. Simple enough, right? put them together. Here are the alignments. There's your first alignment. At the end of the left hand seesaw is where the right hand comes in with its first octave C. Next, together, together. So far so good. Stitch that up a couple times. left hand has to move around quite a lot, so just be free with your hand. Don't feel tight in your wrist or in your arm when you're doing these moves. In the early stages, obviously, it'll feel a little insecure. That's quite normal. But don't compensate for that insecurity by becoming tense. It's a terrible habit that people often develop as a result of that. Let's move on. Together. Both of those come together. So together and then together. Sounds a little cray cray, no doubt, but in in context it makes sense. And then from there. You do the same thing you had before down here, but one octave higher. Except that the B now is in the same place it was before. And the chord that follows it is a little different, but I'll get into that uh, in the next part of the tutorial. So let me play through what we've just learned so far. And then this begins pretty much the same way, but an octave higher. This is an octave higher as well to make room. Left hand drops to B there. So that's a little bit different, right? This chord, G, D, and F. 
as opposed to the last time, which was D, G, and B, right? When we had this time, it's a little bit more opened up. Okay, let's move into the next section in the next part of the tutorial. Stick around and let's move forward.